Hello everyone, Amor here from Retarget Common YouTube channel and I am here with another topic in this episode. So in earlier two videos, I have covered request specification and response specification in this episode. So I got some questions like, can we use both together in a request? Yes, of course we can use in real time in all in the industry practice. We generally use both because both are to reuse the specification. We can reduce a reduce duplicate lines of code as well. Okay, so it is correct that we can use both request and response specification together in a same request. So uh, let's go and experiment that one. Okay, so it will be better if you learn through that some example programs. Okay, so we already know that how to create request request specification and response specification. So let me create a request, okay? Like suppose uh, I will go and uh, create, or uh, let me copy this create booking, okay? For this create booking, uh, create, book, create booking with request and response, Spec specification okay so in this particular class or particular api we are going to use both request and response specification okay so let me remove this unwanted codes and uh, list of things as well and uh, let me remove all this stuff because we don't need these things okay so what i will do I, since we already know that how to create request specification, let me go here and copy from here itself, right? So we have created this one. In the in this particular request specification, we are adding that I want to log everything from request and we are setting up the base URI and the content type. Okay, so let's copy these things. Okay, and use here. Okay, use here. And let me store in a correct type because I am not using the before class and all here. So the same thing I'm using. Okay. And let me create response, let me copy response specification from previous example. Okay, so we have already right uh, where it is. Okay, so here we have, so let me copy this everything and let me put it here. Okay, and let me store into a correct type. Okay, so let me maximize it. So you should see now, let me save everything and let me close all unwanted tabs. Okay. So what I did, there's one create booking request and this create booking, I am doing the request request specification and response specification. So if you have not seen my previous two videos, so you must go and see that how can we create this request specification and what is the usage of this, okay? So just to uh, revise, I will say that the request specification is something where you define or where you say that how your request will look like and same definition applies for response also, but that is called response specification. So the topic of this particular video is that we, how can we use both together in the same API, okay? So that is very simple, just what we need to do. What we need to do. So let me add the base path as well. Let me add the base path as well here. Okay, so simply what you need to do, you need to remove everything. Okay, these are the these are these lines of codes are already in response specification. So we have method called spec, right? Which we, which we have already seen. Simply here you need to pass the request specification. Okay, so this will be this this will be request part, right? And this body we are adding anyway, and once we can remove this content type as well because this content type we are already passing in request specification. Now, 
we can use same thing with the response as well, right? Here also we can use the spec. Okay, and here you need to pass the response specification. So you can see in same request, we are using both request and response specification and it is possible. Okay, let me run it. Let me run it and you see it will work perfectly fine. Okay, so the question was, can we use both request and response specification together? Yes, we can use. And this is the example where we can see uh, ability to printing and we can see one booking ID as well. Okay. So in this, we have used both. Now, if you see here, uh, there's one more way to pass the request specification. If you see this given method, okay, which is provided by the recessor class, and if you do control space, you can see given is overloaded. Okay, so this can be one interview questions also like they might ask which which uh, method are overloaded in recessor. So you can see, yeah, given method is overloaded. You can see here we have normal given method without any argument okay and then we have another given where we where it takes the request specification object okay so instead of writing this spec what we can do you can directly pass it here okay so you can save one line of code again okay you can save this line there's no need to write the spec okay and but if you go to then method right you go to then method so here you will not see that it is overloaded one okay so in then method you cannot pass the response specification okay because in response specification it starts from expect right recessor dot expect so it takes all the assertions only even you put the log dot all under the response space response specification it will not work okay you need to pass only the assertion Okay, that's why here it is not giving you that overloaded method. Okay, this is one way. And there's one more shortcut way. Okay, so let me show you one thing. If you see the given method again, so we have third method. Okay, let me maximize it. Uh, let me... Okay, so you can see third method, right? Here you can see given methods taking both request specification and response specification. Okay, so if you are thinking that we can pass it like instead of passing the spec here, okay, you can comment it and we can pass the response, spe response specification directly here, then it will give you error actually. Here you can see it is giving you error because this particular overloaded method will return you a request sender, right? You can see here, request sender, both remaining uh, two methods, right? The remaining two overloaded given methods are returning you request specification, request specifications only, right? But for the third, it is returning request sender. Okay, so this approach, this particular overloaded method you can use if there's nothing to add extra. Means that this body should also be part of your method uh, request specification itself. Okay, this should be part of this request specification only. Then you can directly call the SPT method on it. Okay, don't, you cannot add anything further. You can, you need to directly call the HTTP method on it. It may be get, post, put, whatever it is. You cannot add anything extra, okay? So if you run it now, it will work perfectly fine. So this will be more shorter code if you, you are mentioning the request and response specification uh, separately, right? So it gives some errors, so let me, yeah. Let me run for it. Okay, so this syntax you can use when you are creating requests and responses because somewhere else and you just want to use it here. Okay, you can see it is, print, it is printing everything and it is print give you the booking ID as well. Okay, so this is the advantage. Okay, so if you're using request 
and response specification together with the given method, make sure you call directly a method on it. You cannot add any extra thing in the quest part now. Okay, and then uh, you, you can go further. If you want to put any extra session, you can put here, okay? But you cannot do anything for request now, okay? So this is this is the way we can use the request and response specification together, okay? Okay, so I hope this uh, this is it for this video. So that uh, and mainly three inputs are three uh, takeaways from you. Like first thing, we can use the request and response specification together in the same request. We can use the spec method, okay, which we see here, spec method, or you can use you can use the overloaded given method only to pass the request specification. Third point, you can use another overloaded method of another given method, which takes both the request and response specification as parameter. But when you use this particular method, then you cannot add any extra part in a, any extra information in the request, okay? So you need to use directly, you need to directly call the another, uh, you need to directly call HTTP method on that request specification, okay? So that's it for this video, and we'll meet with uh, we'll meet in next video with another topic in this session. So thank you, everyone.